One indicator of the bound strength is the bulk modulus. If you remember, we said uh, we have a high melting point and high bulk modulus. That means the bond is very strong. So what is bulk modulus after all? It is the resistance to uniform compression. So if you have a solid like this, which on which you apply a pressure from all sides, when you change the pressure on the solid, how much will be the change in the volume? We define the bulk modulus of a solid as B is equal to minus V dP dV. So it's the change in pressure divided by change in volume uh, multiplied by minus the uh, original volume minus V dP dV. So this it's also known as the stiffness coefficient. And 1 over bulk modulus is K that's called compressibility. So if the bulk modulus is high, the compressibility is low. That means it's very difficult to change the dimensions of the solid by applying pressure on it. So <clears throat> in order to calculate the bulk modulus for a solid, we can recall from the first law of thermodynamics, the change in the energy of the system is the work done on the system minus PDV plus TDS, which is the heat added to the system. So T is the temperature, S is the entropy. And at zero Kelvin absolute temperature, we would have du is equal to minus PDV, or the pressure is minus the derivative of uh, the energy of the system with respect to uh, the volume. So <clears throat> dPdV, that's what we need for bulk modulus, is the derivative with respect to volume of the pressure, where the pressure is minus du dV at zero Kelvin. So we have dPdV is second minus second derivative of the energy of the system with respect to volume, or the bulk modulus, which is minus V dPdV, can be written as V times second derivative of its energy U with respect to volume. And uh, how do we calculate the uh, derivative of the energy with respect to volume? Well, the cohesive energy of the system depends on the distance between the atoms, that's R. So the derivative of U with respect to R and R with respect to V. So second derivative would be the derivative of, with respect to volume of du dr dr dv plus second derivative of r with respect to v du dr. So the derivative with respect to volume is d dr dr dv. So this is going to be, uh, the, the order doesn't matter here, dr dv d dr. Okay, so second derivative of the energy with respect to volume is dr dv square d square u dr square plus d square r dv square du dr. So that's what we obtain by using uh, for ddv, ddr, dr, dv, or dr, dv times uh, ddr. So uh, that's what gave us this first term, d square u dr square times dr, dv square. Okay, so if we uh, work on an FCC crystal, so for a specific case, which is the most common uh, situation in the periodic table, <clears throat> we have... If you remember, uh, four atoms per unit cell. So we have uh, six uh, atoms at the face centers. Uh, half of each are inside, so that is three. And eight atoms at the corners, one eighth of each is inside the unit cell. So that's one, three plus one, four. So four divided by the volume of the unit cell, A cubed, A is the lattice constant. This would give us the atomic density. Now, to find the volume in terms of R, where R is the nearest neighbor distance, let's look at the nearest neighbor distance. It's the distance between an atom at the face center and at the corner. It is A square root 2 over 2. So that's the nearest neighbor distance. Or what I'm calling the lattice constant A is 2R divided by square root 2. So the volume, which is A cube, is going to be 8R cube over 2 square root 2, or 4r cube over square root 2. So that's the volume. So the atomic density that was 4 divided by the volume would be uh, written in terms of the nearest neighbor distance r as 4 divided by 4r cube multiplied by root 2 or root 2 over r cube atoms per volume. Now the total volume 
<coughs> is the number of atoms divided by the atomic density atoms per volume so the total number of n atoms n divided by square root 2 multiplied by r cube gives us the total volume so if we calculate dv dr the, the, the rate of change of volume with respect to the nearest neighbor distance changes in nearest neighbor distance this would be 3nr square divided by square root 2 so when we have the equilibrium situation r is equal to r0 the equilibrium distance r0 would give us a minimum in the energy of the system so we would see that du dr at r0 is equal to 0 so you can remember this from the leonard jones potential we have a minimum there so second derivative of u with respect to v at uh, r equals r0 which is what we need to calculate here is dr dv squared d squared u dr squared because the u dr is 0 at r0 so the second term doesn't exist we have the bulk modulus is equal to volume times second derivative of u with respect to volume that is volume times um, dr dv squared so dv dr was 3 and r square over square root 2 so then we have dr dv is equal to square root 2 divided by 3 and r uh, square so we substitute that for dr dv squared multiplied by d square u dr square so <coughs> on the other hand we know the potential as a function of r that's the leonard jones potential we have a n, a n times number of atoms times the coordination number z lambda e to the minus r over rho poly exclusion repulsive part uh, minus alpha q square over r that is the um, attractive portion due to the interaction between ions and if you look at du dr so the first derivative would give us n times uh, q square alpha uh, the minus sign would disappear it would become 1 over r square and then for the z lambda e to the minus r over rho term we would have minus z lambda over rho e to the minus r over rho and take the second derivative then we have a uh, minus 2 q square alpha over r cube plus 1 over rho squared z lambda e to the minus r over rho and when we substitute r is equal to r0 here um, q square alpha rho over z lambda is going to be equal to uh, r0 square e to the minus r0 rho why because du dr at uh, r equals r0 is 0 so that's the minimum so second derivative at r equals r0 then becomes a uh, capital n number of atoms e uh, minus 2 q square alpha over r0 cube plus 1 over rho square z alpha for e to the minus r0 rho we can substitute q square alpha rho divided by uh, z lambda rho square z lambdas will cancel and we will find capital n q square alpha parentheses 1 over uh, rho uh, because we had a rho square here and rho square uh, on uh, on top uh, we would have um, the r0 cube term is the second term so minus 2 over r0 cube is the second term that's minus 2 q square alpha in q square alpha parentheses and the second term 1 over rho square uh, z all z lambda over r0 square q square alpha rho over uh, z lambda that's going to become um, uh, because we have a rho and rho square at the bottom 1 over rho r0 square minus 2 r0 cube so in n q square alpha over r0 cube parentheses this becomes r0 over rho minus 2 so <clears throat> we find that the bulk modulus which is um, basically the volume times so if we go back to the bulk modulus uh, it was um, the volume times d square u dv square so uh, i have to multiply d square u dr square with dr dv square in order to obtain d square u dv square and then i, th I have to multiply it with the volume so in order to reach this for the volume I have capital N R0 cube 
over uh, root 2 and then I have uh, for dr dv squared 2 square root 2 over 9 r 9 and square r0 to the fourth power and then for du d uh, d second derivative of u with respect to r capital M q square alpha over r0 cube r0 over rho minus 2 this gives us square root 2 over 9 q square alpha divided by r0 to the fourth power r0 over rho minus 2 so that's our bulk modulus so once again what i have done here is uh, i multiply top and bottom with square root 2 here it seems so for uh, for the volume uh, let's see what we found for the volume uh, we have capital N R cube over square root 2 so that's what I have substituted here capital N R 0 cube over root 2 then for the uh, d square u dv square I substituted dr dv square times d square u dr square at R 0 because the second ter term was uh, 0 at R 0 so what was dr dv dr dv was square root 2 divided by 3 and R square so I take its square, I obtain 2 uh, divided by 9 r, uh, r 0 to the 4th power. Then I, I multiply top and bottom with square root 2 uh, and the 2's will cancel in that case. And for the second derivative of u with respect to r evaluated at r 0, I have substituted the result I obtained here and that gives me the bulk modulus. Now, using the experimentally determined values for bulk modulus and R0, the nearest neighbor distance, rho can be calculated uh, to determine the cohesive energy. So we can experimentally measure the bulk modulus and R0 and determine rho. So we can uh, substitute these values, for example, for potassium chloride, uh, the bulk modulus is 1.97 10 to 4 dynes, so this is in CGS units. Uh, 1 newton is 10 to 5 dynes r0 is 3.14 angstroms r0 over 4 uh, rho is 10.4 and we find that the uh, the cohesive energy per atom is minus 7.26 ev experimentally we find this value to be minus 7.39 ev so uh, the bulk modulus, first of all, is an indicator of the bulk strength. The higher it is, the stronger the bond. And uh, by uh, measuring the bulk modulus and the nearest neighbor distance from this formalism that we have derived here, you can see that we can basically predict the cohesive energy of the system. And we, we find good agreement between experiment and the value that we have calculated here.